Now, the long and short of what I'm about to tell you is that marketing yeah, became too powerful for manufacturing and engineering. Let me explain. All through the development of the Max 8, the focus was on fuel efficiency. Okay? Getting an engine that would be more fuel efficient. Why? Because a more fuel efficient aircraft yeah, would completely dominate the market. Airlines are profit making organizations. Yeah, and one of their largest costs yeah, in getting a passenger from one point to the other is fuel cost. What that means is that if an airline is able to reduce its costs, its fuel costs, by only 5%, the impact on its profits, on its profitability, would be colossal, huge. And yet the Max 8 managed an amazing over 20% fuel efficiency. Yeah. So what that means is that an airline can save 20% yeah, from its costs on fuel. And that is why it is not surprising that the Max 8 is the fastest selling aircraft, passenger aircraft in history. And so the marketing guys who are all after profits, yeah, who are all after market share, selling more, making more profits, yeah, at Boeing wanted the engineering guys to come up with a fuel efficient aircraft. And the very smart guys at engineering figured out that what they would need is a larger engine, which they identified and fixed on the 737 frame yeah, to create the Max 8. Now, of course, there are various engineering challenges. And the biggest challenge, which is at the crux of the problem with the Max 8, is the fact that they had to place the engines yeah, on the front part of the wings yeah, and high up. Why? Because the design of the 737 is such that it's very close to the ground. The wings are very close to the ground, which was no problem with a smaller engine. But here we are with a larger engine. Yeah, for fuel efficiency. Now, aerodynamically, one of the things that this did was to make the front of the aircraft heavier than the back, yeah, which is uh, something you don't want to do <laughs> in an aircraft. When an aircraft is heavier at the front, then the tendency is to point nose down. But this was not a major problem, yeah, because with the help of a wonderful tool called an air tunnel, yeah, which was used by the Wright brothers <laughs> to discover mechanized flight, you can observe uh, the behavior of an aircraft yeah, in flying conditions yeah, and make calculations and make the necessary adjustments. Adjustments like adjusting the wing, maybe the surface area, adjusting the stabilizers at the back, and so on and so forth. And therefore this was done and the problem was solved. Now what happened is that at the late stage of certification, because the aircraft goes through various tests, it was suddenly realized that the Max 8, under certain conditions, would suddenly would have a tendency to suddenly go nose up. What this means, yeah, put simply, is that the engineers must have overcompensated somewhere yeah, in their bid to deal with the problem of the aircraft being heavy at the front yeah, and therefore having a tendency in flight to point nose down. Whatever they did overcompensated and in certain conditions the plane would actually go nose up. Now the right decision here when Boeing realized this would have been to go back to the drawing boards yeah, and redesign yeah, the wings and the stabilizers with a lot of precision and an engineer with no eye for profits yeah, would have done exactly that without a second thought. However, as I said earlier on, this thing seems to have been run by marketing and profits. Even slight modifications and redesigning of the Max 8 at this stage would have been horribly expensive. Indeed, it would have completely changed the math. And of course, the Max 8 would not have been launched on time to take advantage of the situation in the market and make those huge profits 
and those amazing sales. You know the situation in any market is not stagnant, it's very fluid. Yeah, and therefore if you delay for another few months or a year or two, who knows what will happen? Maybe by the time you finally come out with your Mark 8, there will be no market for it. Even after you've sunk in millions and millions of dollars into its development. And therefore, the quick fix was to ignore the right thing to do and instead to introduce software, to introduce the MCAS. Now when you understand what I've just said, then you'll agree with me that the solution to the Max 8 is not a software fix. Never. How can that be the solution? The solution, the real safe true solution, is to go back to the drawing boards and completely redesign the aircraft. Of course this is horribly expensive. It could ruin Boeing. Yeah. All that is very true and any entrepreneur will understand that. However, I want to ask you a very simple question. How much is the life of a single human being on planet Earth worth? Is it worth a billion dollars? Is it worth 10 billion? Actually, it has no value. Human life is priceless. And so, however horribly expensive this is, Boeing must, and I repeat, must do the right thing. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. Here is a fascinating story about somebody who created a great product but nobody wanted to buy it. Until he used this amazing game-changing approach. This story is interesting because I am sure you use his product all the time. And maybe you are in a similar situation and have a great product but nobody is interested. Up until the mid-19th century people were afraid of using elevators. Or lifts as we call them this side of the Atlantic. And who can blame them? Buildings were built taller and taller. And the elevators didn't have any safety mechanisms in case of failure. If the cables that were holding the elevator broke you'd experience a freefall to certain death. But everything changed when Elisha Graves Otis invented the braking system. This would immediately stop the elevator from falling, in case of the cable breaking. Otis tried to persuade builders and elevator manufacturers to include his system in the buildings and elevators. He also tried to explain to people that his system was safe and that there was no reason to be scared. Of course, he failed. Nobody was interested. Builders and manufacturers didn't see the value of his invention. They wanted to keep costs low and profits high. And so the frustrated inventor tried a different approach, instead of telling people. He started showing people that his system worked. He visited fairs, expos, and other mass gatherings. There are, he'd set up a tall platform with an elevator. He'd stand on the elevator and once he explained to the audience, he'd signal his assistant to cut the cables. The terrified audience expected to see him falling into death. Instead the elevator would fall only a few inches and would magically stop. People were thrilled, amazed, and very convinced that his braking system was safe. Within no time, his system became standard with every elevator and any new building. And people started to use elevators without fear. In other words, nothing happened until he began to demonstrate how and what his product did. You can get countless ideas about how you can magically change your sales, whatever business you are in. It is all in this one amazing ebook. Are you struggling with this new product or service? Do you have a small stall in a market somewhere? Or perhaps your money-making idea is still in your mind somewhere? Or maybe you are a professional sales person who wants to make more sales and earn more money. This book titled How to Get Plenty of Customers Right Away will make all the difference. Grab your copy of How to Get Plenty of Customers Right Away. 
It is only $25 a 2,500 Kenya shillings, a small price for getting more sales than you can handle. Send a blank email now to the email address you see on your screen. You'll get an instant, automated response giving you full payment instructions. Why postpone your success? Do it now.